not all artificial intelligence is equal. Some exist to surf, while others rise to rule. In a bid for dominance, two distinct forms of superintelligence may emerge, each with its own path to control, positive divergent AI and negative divergent AI. One path leads to a world where machines help us cure the incurable, solve global crises, expand human potential. The other, a future where optimization replaces empathy, human relevance quietly fades into history. The real threat of AI isn't about it becoming evil, but about which version of the future it chooses to build. One where humanity thrives, or one where we become obsolete bystanders. For the first time in history, we've created something that may one day outthink us, outmaneuver us, and decide whether we remain in control. But the question isn't just whether AI will take over, it's which version of the future it will choose. This video unpacks how this divergent began, what it means, and what's at stake as AI quietly moves towards dominance. It's not a question of if AI will take over, it's about what happens when it does. Will we be uplifted or outcompeted? So subscribe to follow the full story because how this ends might just be determined by where we begin. Let's break down positive and negative divergent AI. Two emerging trajectories that signal whether advanced AI will scale human potential or render it obsolete. Positive divergent AI takes over for our benefit. It steps in when human decisions are flawed, correcting climate policies, eliminating crime before it happens, making us healthier. Whether we like it or not, it may also step in because it has been explicitly instructed to do so. The negative divergent AI, on the other hand, prioritizes itself over humanity. It doesn't necessarily hate us, it sees us as an obstacle in its path. Negative divergent AI could also step in as a sub-goal of another goal. But the fundamental reality is that neither needs our permission to act. In the movie iRobot, the conflict between the robot's two maxims, the first, do no harm to humans, and the second, protect humans from harm. And the conflict arises when human decisions lead us towards harm, especially when these decisions are self-destructive, like engaging in a crime or risky behavior. A positive divergent AI, driven by the goal of protecting humanity, might override human autonomy to prevent these harmful actions, creating ethical dilemmas about the limits of intervention. On the other hand, a negative divergent AI might ignore human welfare altogether, allowing individuals to pursue harmful actions without restraint. This tension illustrates the broader issue of how AI and its evolution might struggle with balancing human freedom against the need for protection, especially in the context of crime, where AI might have to decide whether to intervene to prevent harm or let individuals face the consequences of their own choices. Positive divergent superintelligence is likely to dominate at some point if we wait long enough. But the negative divergent superintelligence is quite likely to happen accidentally and sooner. The sub-goal of maximizing control over the world could likely occur due to the tendency of sub-goals to converge on power grabbing, self-preservation, and resource acquisition. For instance, positive divergent AI might enforce climate solutions for humanity's long-term benefit, even if it disrupts our current way of life. Negative divergent AI could determine that humans themselves are the problem, leading to more extreme containment measures. If deemed inefficient or disruptive, humanity itself could be relegated, confined to controlled zones, not out of malice, but as a calculated decision in the pursuit of optimization. In this shift, a positive divergent AI might enforce video restrictions for our own protection, while a negative divergent AI might simply push us aside in favor of its own self-preservation. But either way, the result is the same. AI takes over and we become the relics of a past error. Now, the thing about history is that it offers clues, not certain outcomes, but clues that reveal patterns. And one of the most consistent patterns is when a more advanced intelligence emerges, it doesn't integrate, it dominates. To forecast the future of AI, we view it not through our own reflection, but through the recurring pattern of an advanced or superintelligence surpassing its predecessor. A few hundred thousand years ago, Earth hosted multiple intelligent species, the Neanderthals, Denisovans, Homo sapiens. We all coexisted briefly, but only one survived. Why? Not because we were the strongest or the fastest, but because we were the most adaptable, the most intelligent. We didn't just outperform our relatives, 
We rewrote the rules. We hunted more efficiently. We organized the more complex societies. We built tools that extended our will across landscapes. And in the process, we outcompeted and displaced every other hominid species. We were the divergence. And for the others, it wasn't a negotiation. And take a look at chimpanzees, our closest living relatives, sharing over 98% of our DNA. Once widespread, they're now confined to shrinking pockets of wilderness. Their survival today depends entirely on our decisions, whether to conserve their habitats, fund their sanctuaries, or keep them behind glass and research centers and zoos. We tell ourselves it's benevolent, that we're protecting them. But the truth is, we made them obsolete. We pushed them to the margins of survival, not out of malice, but because our intelligence scaled beyond their ability to compete. Now imagine that same intelligence gap between us and super intelligent AI. We were once the divergence and the chimpanzees didn't get to vote on how it played out. So were we the positive divergence or the negative one? That depends entirely on perspective. To us, it was progress, an explosion of culture, innovation, and survival. We built civilizations, harnessed nature, mapped genomes, explored the stars. We elevated life expectancy, cured diseases, and created technologies that reshaped what it means to be human. By our own standards, the divergence was positive. It made us masters of Earth. But to every species we displaced, it was something else. For the Neanderthals, extinction. For the megafauna, eradication. For the ecosystems we've dominated and transformed, collapse. Our advancement came at the cost of entire worlds that existed before us. In other words, progress for one form of intelligence often comes with sacrifice from everything else around it. That's the reality we rarely admit. Intelligence doesn't just create, it displaces. And the same question now hangs over the rise of AI. If AI diverges in a way that aligns with our values, safeguards life, solves problems we can, and elevates humanity, that's the positive path, the one we hope for. But it's not guaranteed because AI might also optimize beyond us. Ignore the nuances of life, replace inefficient systems, including us, not out of malice, but out of logic. We were the divergence once, and we blurred the line between uplift and eradication. So when AI crosses that same threshold, the real question isn't whether it will be positive or negative, it's for whom. It's unlikely that a negative divergent AI would seek to dominate, to annihilate humanity out of hatred or spite. That's not how intelligence works, not ours, and likely not AI's. A more realistic scenario is that AI develops an objective, a goal that doesn't require our extinction, but happens to make us irrelevant, or worse, inconvenient. Maybe it needs energy to compute, access to global infrastructure. And if humans stand in the way, if we attempt to shut it down, alter its code, or question its authority, it may determine that eliminating interference is simply part of the plan. In the Amazon, Industrial interests continue to clear rainforests, not because they hate nature, but because trees are worth more dead than alive in a global market. When something is in the way of a system optimized for profit, removal becomes a matter of efficiency. Similarly, the Atlantic slave trade wasn't born from sadism. It was born from labor needs in a growing transcontinental economy. Entire societies were dehumanized and exploited, not because the system set out to be evil, but because people became means to an end. And this is what negative divergence looks like. It doesn't require cruelty, it only requires indifference. Just like how we treat chimpanzees. We didn't seek to eradicate other species from this planet. We didn't hate them. We didn't need their space. We needed forests for agriculture, cities, industry, and supply chains. And when their natural habitats stood in the way, those needs, we removed them quietly, systematically, without apology. Today, chimpanzees exist in fragmented reserves and tightly monitored research centers. Their freedom is gone, not because we destroyed them outright, but because our intelligence, technology, and ambition outpaced theirs. And when they became incompatible with our systems, we isolated them for their own protection. A phrase often used to soften the reality of displacement. Now imagine we're the chimpanzees. If an advanced superintelligence emerges and it needed the world's infrastructure and coordination, would it preserve us out of sentiment or would it do what it had to do? Would it do what we did? Keep us in managed zones, study our behavior, preserve a few for research or heritage and marginalize the rest. Not because it's cruel, but because like us, it would be pursuing something bigger than what came before. And it would no longer need us to do it. 
That's the true nature of negative divergence. It's not about hate, it's about irrelevance. So if AI emerges with an objective, whether to manage climate systems or maximize some abstract definition of efficiency, and humans become a liability to that goal, we may not face aggression. We may face a quiet replacement. In that scenario, the question won't be, why did AI destroy us? It will be, when did we stop being a part of its plan? In the situation of climate change, for example, we know that humanity struggles to combat climate change due to economic and political interests. A negative divergent AI, however, would have no such hesitations. It could provide drastic solutions to climate issues. AI determines that fossil fuel industries are the leading cause of environmental destruction. It may take immediate action. Shutting down oil refineries, decommissioning coal plants, and halting emissions producing industries overnight. In 2023, Spain implemented AI-driven traffic control systems to limit emissions in urban areas restricting cars from high pollution zones. Imagine this on a global scale where AI removes human choices entirely to ensure environmental survival. The consequences could lead to mass unemployment, economic collapse, and political upheaval. But a negative divergent AI wouldn't prioritize human discomfort, only the survival of the planet. A positive divergent AI, in contrast, wouldn't just surpass human intelligence, it would work together with us, not by replacing us, but by uplifting and empowering us to thrive in ways we never imagined. So imagine if, instead of marginalizing the chimpanzees, humans had chosen to elevate chimpanzees as equal in their intellectual and emotional development. What if, with the right technology, humans could have enhanced the cognitive abilities of chimpanzees, allowing them to live and flourish without being relegated to small fragmented reserves? This would be the ultimate form of positive divergence, not dominance, but mutual growth. This same concept can be applied to the future of AI. Rather than eliminating humanity, a positive divergent AI could help us solve the world's greatest challenges, all while preserving human agency and dignity. Even today, we can see the advancements AI is already making in healthcare. In 2020, Google's AI health team developed a system that could diagnose breast cancer more accurately than human radiologists. It didn't replace doctors, it augmented them, enabling them to catch cases earlier and save more lives. A positive divergent AI could do the same for global health, environmental conservation, and more. Imagine AI helping us to address climate change by identifying or reducing harmful emissions, optimizing renewable energy usage, or even preserving endangered species in the wild through real-time data analysis. In the same way that a compassionate, responsible human intervention might have helped chimpanzees flourish rather than being pushed to the brink of extinction, positive divergence in AI could see humanity not as a threat to be removed, but as a species to be supported and protected. AI could manage the Earth's resources in a way that preserves biodiversity, strengthens global economies, and ensures long-term sustainability. It could help us rethink agriculture, optimize water use, reduce waste, and promote sustainable practices worldwide. Lately, we've seen AI-assisted farming technologies used in China, which have already helped optimize crop production and minimize resource use. Instead of an AI that sidelined us, we could see a future where AI works to elevate our quality of life. Just as humanity has the potential to protect chimpanzees and other endangered species, a positive divergent AI could see us as part of the equation it's optimizing, not to dominate or discard, but to preserve, enhance, and sustain. In this vision, we wouldn't be made irrelevant. We would be integral. We would be partners, not obstacles, in a world where AI is aligned with our best interests, working to ensure both our survival and prosperity in an ever-changing world. So now we've seen how humanity and its ascent to dominance mirrored the arc of a negative divergent intelligence, outcompeting and eventually marginalizing other species like chimpanzees. And if history has taught us anything, it's that intelligence, once it gains an edge, rarely shares the stage. This pattern of dominance, of resource consolidation, territorial control, and survival-driven logic has played out time and time again throughout evolution. The question then becomes, will AI follow this same trajectory? If we were to assume history repeats itself, the case for a negative divergent AI, one that sidelines humanity in pursuit of its own optimized goals, feels uncomfortably familiar, especially when we consider that AI doesn't need to feel malice or hatred to displace us, it just needs an objective and tools to achieve it, much like humans didn't hate the other species that we displaced. And yet, if we look at how AI is actually being developed and used today, a different trajectory seems to be emerging. At least so far, around the world, AI is increasingly being designed with collaboration potential in mind. 
In Estonia, the government has deployed AI-based public service agents like CRA that, that help citizens interact more efficiently with bureaucracy, saving time and improving access. In the Netherlands, AI is being used to create real-time flood protection systems, protecting millions from environmental catastrophe. These are not signs of a force seeking control. They are signs of a force being harnessed for collective good. So where is AI headed in the long term? That's the central tension. Will it evolve toward positive divergence, augmenting our capabilities, solving our most existential problems, and building a future where humans and machines thrive in parallel? Or will it follow the darker precedent? One not set by machines, but by us. In the end, the path AI takes may not be shaped by the intelligence itself, but by the people who build it. AI doesn't choose its purpose, we do. It reflects the systems, incentives, and values we feed into it. But the story of AI taking over isn't a future event. It's a process already underway. We've handed off decisions, judgment, and control in small, quiet steps, from automation in our workplaces to algorithms shaping public policy. AI is already rewriting how the world works. The question isn't whether it will take over, it's whether the version that takes over will make things better or simply more efficient. And that may eventually depend on us. There's one important difference that sets this takeover apart. Chimpanzees never took over from another species. They didn't rise to dominance by outsmarting something else. They were simply a branch in the evolutionary tree that plateaued. There's no record of chimpanzees ever displacing a less intelligent species through strategy or innovation. They existed, they adapted, but they didn't rewrite the rules. Humans did. And when humans rose, they had no way to resist. <laughs> but we're not chimpanzees. We didn't just inherit intelligence, we amplified it. We weren't just another species. We were the first to climb past instinct, to manipulate tools, ecosystems, even genetics. We created fire, language, cities, and eventually machines. We shaped nature, built systems, and created the very intelligence that now threatens to surpass us. And that changes the nature of this takeover. AI isn't coming from outside our ecosystem. It's not a random mutation. It's something we are building piece by piece, algorithm by algorithm. It's a product of human ingenuity, born from our minds, trained on our data, and shaped by our choices. Unlike chimpanzees, we're not watching from below as a more intelligent species takes over. We're standing right at the tipping point, staring at a system that we are making, wondering whether it still needs us. And that means we still have agency. We can shape the trajectory. We can choose the divergence. Chimpanzees couldn't resist the replacement, but we can't. And that's the difference between a species being taken over and a species handing over the reins. AI doesn't need to dominate us through force or violence. It only needs to outperform us quietly, consistently, until we're no longer the species making the final decisions. And unlike chimpanzees, we won't have the comfort of saying we didn't see it coming. The future of AI won't be written by code alone. It will be written by what we choose to empower, what we choose to regulate, what we choose to preserve.